Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first webinar on the Wiki ODS. Um, today, we'll be introducing the platform to you and give you a first insight to the data and the tools that you can find on the Wiki ODS platform uh, and also what you can use the, the DS for. Um, we've lined up uh, a number of experts for you today uh, who will guide you on your journey uh, in, on this first step in the use of the Wiki ODS. Um, we have Fabrice Messel, uh, a training and educational manager of um, uh, Mercator uh, uh, Ocean International. Um, after six years of developing partnerships and projects in the frame of the Mercator Ocean uh, outreach activities, he's currently in charge of training activities for the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service, or CMEMS. Uh, Fabrice has a background in science and applications, uh, numerical imagery, and has professional experience in data visualization, software development, and scientific mediation. Uh, Haley Evers King uh, from Umetsat uh, uh, is a marine applications expert. Uh, at Umetsat, she supports marine user engagement and training with a particular focus on Copernicus and the Sentinel 3 and Sentinel 6 missions. Uh, she has a PhD in the field of uh, ocean optics and is an expert in, on many marine uh, earth observation applications. And then my colleague Stefan Urevich and I work at uh, Wikio User Support. Uh, Stefan has been involved in Copernicus user uptake activities for over 10 years and is an expert on communication and user uh, engagement uh, and the Copernicus services. Uh, and uh, me, anna Katrien, I have a background in earth observation and I've been working on Copernicus uh, user uptake activities since 2016. Um, so together we will give you an overview of everything that you need uh, to know about the Wiki ODS service um, so that you have a thorough introduction to the platform and are ready to de uh, dive deeper with us um, in the coming webinars. Uh, on today's agenda, uh, so we'll start with an overview of the Copernicus DS, the concept behind the DS. Um, as a background for the Wiki, the Wiki ODS in particular. Uh, Fabrice will then guide you through uh, a first demonstration of the Wikio platform, uh, after which I will give you some more details about the data, the tools, the pricing, uh, and the virtual processing environments. Haley will then show you new opportunities uh, in Wikio, and Stefan will end with a presentation on the user support activities, uh, which are aimed specifically at you. Uh, and finally, we'll show you what's on the planning for the, the coming weeks and months um, for you to really uh, get to know the Wiki ODS. Um, some basic uh, rules that we want to, you to keep in mind. Uh, so you're all on mute. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. Uh, as you uh, can see in the chat, uh, you will um, uh, have the option to choose a question mark um, just above where you're typing. Um, and that's going to indicate for us that you have a question uh, rather than a comment. And uh, at the end of our webinar uh, during the Q&A session, um, we will uh, choose um, uh, some of the questions to be displayed on the screen uh, where the experts will then uh, answer the question. Uh, considering that we're already up to over 50 attendees and over 100 have registered. It might be that we can't answer all of the questions that are asked in the chat, um, but don't worry um, if, if there's any questions unanswered, uh, they will be answered in a, a document uh, afterwards um, and uh, shared with you. Uh, and so, so this is how uh, it will look like for you. Um, uh, once we uh, start answering the questions. Um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed today's webinar. Um, if you um, uh, want to reach out to us, and we'll repeat this uh, afterwards as well, uh, we're on Twitter at WikiODS. Uh, we have a support email address, support at wikio.eu. And um, uh, we, yes, we hope you enjoyed today. Uh, Fabrice? Uh, no, Stefan? Uh, yes. Trying to load my presentation, but it doesn't load. Maybe somebody can just give me rights, rights to load. Here we go. Here we go. 
So good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, or even good morning to some of you, because we're, we're thrilled to see that there are some of you that are in the late evening in China, others in the Philippines, other are in the morning in Chile, in Canada. So it's really, really interesting uh, to see that our WKO platform is generating such a such a level of interest. What I will try to do in this presentation is to show you why is WKO unique amongst the DSs. Uh, for those who do not know, there are in total five competing DSs that are being co-funded by the European Commission and the Copernicus program. And WKO is, I would say, the, the last one to come up on, on the scene, but a rather unique one, and I will try to uh, tell you why. So what is WKO? WKO and the other DSs were, were created to respond to the same issue. The issue that the Copernicus satellites and the Copernicus um, services generate, generate petabytes of data. Petabytes of data that become more and more difficult to download, to process uh, on a, a single computer. And so there is a requirement for the ability to uh, work with the data in the cloud without having to access and download the full, a full uh, tile or a full data set. There is uh, um, also an interest to um, subset uh, data to be able to process, in the, process it in the cloud, etc. It's really, basically, the European Union uh, has funded this incredible Copernicus program that puts so many different types of data at your disposal, and this is worldwide, and the uh, international attendance to this uh, webinar is a good proof of that, uh, and it would really uh, be a pity if it was not accessible to the widest possible number of uh, users because of connectivity issues, because of processing power issues, because of storage, computer storage issues, etc. So this is this is the raison d'être. This is the reason why WKO was created. Who created WKO? Well. UMETSAT, the European uh, Organization for the Exploitation of Meteorological Satellites, Mercator Ocean International, who is producing the Copernicus Marine Service on behalf of the European Commission, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, maybe the leading organization worldwide for uh, numerical we uh, weather forecast, which has been entrusted by the European Commission to produce the Climate Change Service of Copernicus, as well as the Atmosphere uh, Monitoring Service. And since recently, the European uh, Environment Agency has started to join this team. Uh, and they are, amongst many other things, the producers of the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service data. So basically, what do you have? You have in a cloud environment, and then we'll come back to it, all of the accessible Copernicus data from all the four and soon five with Sentinel-6 uh, being in the commissioning phase, the data from all the Copernicus satellites in orbit, together with the data from all the accessible Copernicus services in one place. And one of the beauties of this setup is who knows the data better than those who produce it? Who knows the data better than those who are the custodians of that data? Who knows better the potential scientific and business applications of these data sets? The organizations that are in charge of producing it, storing it, et cetera, et cetera. So this is already a, a very unique feature which impacts the entire system, both in terms of data access, I don't know why my slides are moving alone, uh, both in terms of data access, but also in terms of user support. Uh, WKO offers a certain number of features. Some of them, I would say, are in principle standard for all of the DSs. By the way, I forgot to specify DS for those not familiar with our acronyms and our jargon, stands for Copernicus Data and Information Access Services. So we are one of those. And we offer things that I would say are typical of a DS, such as, well, an IT infrastructure in the cloud, tools. But we have some unique features, which I'll highlight a bit later. Uh, in particular, um, a very strong focus on user development and user management. Uh, High-level, uh, world-class or first-class user support. 
and we will also soon deploy a marketplace that will enable users to showcase their uh, what they do, what they produce, what they process uh, using using Wikio. Uh, a point I haven't made also is that in order to ensure that all of the various components of the Wikio platform would be world class. Um, the the proponents, the, the team, has sent out tenders to industry and for items such as cloud and IT, such as tools, such as user support, they have endeavored to contract the best teams of, of from industry uh, to really provide this uh, unique and uh, super high quality service. So what, what is WKO? It's all the Copernicus data hosted in the cloud where you can look at huge data sets in terms of volume and in terms of number of uh, layer or in terms of different um, types of data. Uh, this data can be processed, uh, well, can be discovered, so you can look at what's there. You can uh, download it in certain options. You can process it in the cloud. You can do subsettings. You can use Jupyter notebooks, etc. There's a whole IT environment that will be further presented to you. And there is, again, this user support service. But I won't dwell on this for too long right now, because this is the subject of one of the mini presentations that we will deliver later in this webinar. Another unique feature of Wikio is, is its distributed infrastructure. What do we mean by distributed infrastructure? All the other DSs replicate the data that is stored uh, by the European Space Agency or by other actors uh, and all the data producers, in particular the, the five accessible Copernicus services, duplicates this, the information that is already available into their own cloud. We don't. We have this distributed infrastructure with three data centers. These three data centers com communicate with each, uh, each other. So you're not looking at the mirror of the data. You're not looking at a data set that has not been updated uh, very recently. You're looking at the native original data where it is currently stored. So this is a gain in terms of speed. This is a gain in terms of data completeness, timeliness, accuracy, et cetera, because any change that the producers implement in data sets is immediately reflected in what you would find in Wikio. And last but not least, uh, it avoids having one more cloud um, procured, paid for, uh, with its automatic carbon imprint. So we modestly believe that we are the DS with the lowest carbon imprint. And that is important to us because obviously the uh, the Green Deal is one of the major political objectives of the current uh, the von der Leyen Commission, and we're happy to modestly contribute to that objective by being the most eco-friendly um, DS there is. Another difference also is well, seeing what where who the actors of WKO are, all world-class institutions. Uh, that uh, with a very high specialization and publicly owned, uh, it makes a difference. We're not, we're, Wikio is not in there to make money. Wikio has to charge for some services, and we will talk about the pricing plans later. This is to cover costs or to cover the part of the costs that are not funded by the commission because the commission, again, only partially co-funds uh, this, this activity. And the fact that we're directly plugged into the data also gives us and gives you, the users, the best guarantee that any update, any new data set, any new uh, service available from Copernicus will be made available nearly instantly uh, into, uh, into the Wikio DS cloud infrastructure. Our main assets. So as I said, it's not a copy. It's really the data at its source directly, an expert user support, and this harmonized data access. This is kind of the message we want you uh, to go away with. My slides are taking some time to change. Ah, So Fabrice will soon give you a little uh, tour, a little visit of the Wikio platform. So I won't dwell into that. Uh, who are the users? All kinds of users. We have users which are European member states organization, um, non-EU member state organizations, national, 
European international policymakers, local and regional administrations in the EU and outside. The private sector, well, the private sector is already an important user of WIKEO, uh, and several of the Copernicus products are developed using the um, Copernicus uh, WIKEO infrastructure. I'm thinking in particular of uh, uh, some of the uh, Copernicus land monitoring service, the new, some of the new products are directly being developed in the WIKEO infrastructure. So this is not only, this is not a prototype, this is not something that uh, doesn't yet work and that's why we're only starting to promote it now. This is something that has already been functioning and is operationally used to deliver services critical services such as the ones delivered by Copernicus. So it's a trust, that's a good proof that this is a trustworthy platform. Another example is the fact that um, it's currently being used also to uh, manipulate and prepare very, very large data sets that are going to be used in the European Space Agency um, in our artificial intelligence challenge. Uh, so really it's up completely operational. It's also um, aimed at satisfying the needs of the research and civil society. So environmental scientists, um, the um, earth system science, scientists, uh, research projects, uh, NGOs and foundations, but also the general, the general public, uh, because you can just discover the data, look at it, download it, etc., without having to, to pay. Uh, and also by journalists, because I must, um, we're very happy to see that more and more the press is uh, using Copernicus information, Copernicus uh, data uh, to illustrate articles or to make a certain particular point. So we're hoping that you will, after this webinar, find uh, an interest in joining uh, our community. And I'll be uh, seeing you again in a short while to uh, give you more details about the uh, user support. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, we'll now start with a, um, a, a demonstration uh, of the platform by Fabrice. Uh, Fabrice, are you online? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm back. Hello. So now you can see me and hear me well. Yes. OK, I had a bad conflict on, on, on my computer between the Wi-Fi and the uh, network. So don't worry about that. Now it's okay. working. I'm ready. Yeah, it's, uh, it's perfect. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, try to share my screen now. Uh, and I will try to uh, continue my uh, Short overview of uh, the website. So, uh, so the the single access point of Wico is a website. Uh, so Anna, Catherine, and uh, uh, Stefan told you uh, uh, more about the offer uh, on uh, about Wikio offer. And uh, now let's see how to find all this information and how this uh, catalog of data on the website and how to register, uh, etc. So. As you see, it's very simple. You have the uh, direct um, access here with this uh, uh, button on the uh, front page with uh, um, this button, register now. So you can register if you want. But if you want just to have a look to the data and to see uh, which data can be uh, relevant for your, uh, your activities, uh, you can have a look on the uh, Wikio Data Viewer to access the data. So I, okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> okay, so thanks to this viewer, uh, by clicking here to add a new layer, for example, here we have two layer uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the viewer. And I, if I want to add more layer, I can access to the entire catalog of Wikio, okay? And now you can search which data uh, can be relevant for your uh, for your for your activity. 
you can use filters uh, uh, between the different Copernicus services or the different Sentinel platform or by sensors, by areas, uh, with uh, <coughs> some tags corresponding to uh, some variables, for example. And uh, briefly, we can try to have a look to, uh, uh, to, to marine data because uh, I'm from the marine side, so it's easier for me to talk about that uh, on the global. And uh, if I want to some data about waves, uh, global waves analysis and forecast, okay, say add to map, add to map, I would like information about the uh, uh, sea surface wave significant, significant way eight. Sorry, so I click add to map. Okay, I can uh, uh, cut the visibility of uh, uh, the other uh, uh, the other layer, and okay, now it's coming at the map of the waves. Okay, and now I can have information on the product if I want. Okay, if I click here, I have this pop-up window with uh, the description of the model, the data set ID. It's very important if you want to use uh, this ID to download the data or to uh, to use the data on the Jupyter Hub um, or on your virtual machine to access the data. So this ID is very important. You have information on the producers about the service who, are, who is dealing with uh, this data, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So you have all this information. You can close the map. Okay. And after that, thanks to the viewer, you can see which data is available on the timeline. And uh, for example, if I try to choose another date, I can navigate on the timeline, choose another date, et cetera. Okay. So the data is updated directly on the viewer. And then if I want to subset and download, download the data, I need to click here, but I'm not registered yet. So I can't access to this for the moment. So I need to go on the register page. And now you can see the registration form is very simple. You have just to enter your email address, name, pass name, choose a, uh, a password, uh, give some information about your organization and which plan you want to use. As anna Catherine uh, introduced you, uh, we have two plans, the essential plan and the, uh, the advanced uh, plan, which is a pay plan. And if you choose the advanced plan, uh, you have the different plan size, the t-shirt size, uh, which, uh, and uh, you, you can choose um, between uh, all of these plan, uh, plan size, okay? And then you enter and it's done. It's automatically uh, done. Uh, you can sign in. And once you're connected on the website, with your login and password, you can directly go again on the data viewer. Okay, close this window. Okay, I have my layer with my C surface wave uh, uh, data. And now I want to uh, subset or download the data. I can choose uh, the year, I can choose an area of interest, etc. I can click here to have my IPI uh, request to use on the uh, Jupyter Notebooks, for example. This is the uh, uh, harmonized data access uh, API. This is the, the, the most important API to access the data on the Wikio uh, website. And you can request the data to download directly the data you want, okay? So it's simple uh, as it and uh, uh, if I go back on the home page, now I'm uh, logging on the website. I can go to my dashboard. So this is my personal dashboard and there is information on my profile. 
and I can have access to the Jupyter Hub of uh, the Jupyter Hub of um, of uh, Wikio, and have access to my Jupyter notebook. I can choose uh, different uh, uh, server options to, uh, uh, to 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 play with my data on the Jupyter Hub. And uh, I can have access to also to my virtual machine because I have a profile of uh, an advanced user. So I can quickly have access to my, sorry, it's not a good button, virtual machine. Okay, this is a dashboard to access on the, uh, the, the, the virtual machine of my, my plan. So I just started to, to use it. So <laughs> for the moment, uh, no incident or no uh, uh, processing uh, uh, are running now. But uh, OK, this is a dashboard. This is very simple. You can uh, uh, install a virtual machine and choose uh, which process you, you want to, to launch on, uh, on this virtual machine. So you see, it's very simple. Uh, so you have the data viewer to access to all the catalog. You choose the data. You can subset the data, choose or to uh, request the data. So download the data on your own computer or uh, have access to the IPI request. So this is a, a piece of code. And you take this piece of code and you have all this information, uh, all the information uh, on this reference documentation about the HDA API, how to use the API, how to uh, to, to understand what is uh, uh, the API. and uh, how to use it. So it's very simple. So I think uh, my time is gone. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. And again, sorry for the, the first try of my demonstration. Uh, thank you very much. Very happy to have uh, been able to see your um, uh, your demonstration. Uh, that, that OK. Um, so. As always, live demonstrations um, are not always that easy um, in these virtual events, especially. Uh, but I will give you an overview of uh, what Wikio has to offer, and it'll touch on the lo a lot of the points that you can find on the website. Um, if you want to have a check uh, yourself, um, the website is very user friendly. Uh, you can find it on uh, wikio.eu uh, and uh, we invite you that, that if you have any questions, of course, we're always here to answer them. Um, but hopefully this uh, presentation will already uh, get you on your way a little bit. Um, so uh, what can you find uh, on, on the website, on the platform um, of, uh, of Wikio? Um, of course, one of the most important things is the data catalog. As Stefan mentioned already, the data catalog contains the original Copernicus uh, data from the Copernicus services and several uh, Sentinel um, imagery data sets as well. Um, they're mirrored, mirrored from the original uh, data centers. Uh, so they're always the, the latest available data that you can find there. Um, and then if you want to work with those data, um, what, el what else do you need? Um, if you want to have access to them and get to, um, process them on your own platform, you have unified APIs um, that really give you, uh, that's one API that gives you access to all of those different data sets. Um, there are also com computational resources available. Uh, and that's uh, when you uh, decide that you want to, to process a lot of data. Um, the Copernicus um, data and information that's available right now is um, in the size of petabytes uh, for um, a program that only started uh, six years ago. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal amount of data. And of course, doing that on your own laptop might be a little bit too much to ask uh, from the, the computing power of your laptop. So that's why Wikio also offers um, the possibility to have virtual machines, um, and then you can process the data close to where they are located, uh, speeding up any of the, the uh, uh, applications or, or processes that you want to run. Um, 
you have a section on meet uh, the experts uh, where you can contact the Wikio experts uh, both for questions around Copernicus, the Sentinel products, uh, but also about cloud computing and all of the virtual machines that are on offer. Uh, if you do decide to go ahead um, with uh, trying out the Wikio uh, DS, uh, you can set up a free trial. Um, uh, there are several uh, pricing plans and all of them offer free trials. Uh, so uh, be sure to check that out. And if you have an application that you have developed already and want to promote it, or you want to, to look for partners that uh, offer a, a certain service or um, that just uh, mingle with the community, uh, that's also an option that you can find on the Wikio website. And uh, the benefit, of course, is that everything is available on a single access point. You don't need to go somewhere else to find the data and then go to another point to find uh, any processing power um, or and then to another uh, website to find any documentation or uh, information or user support. It's all integrated into one platform. So in terms of the data that you can find, um, I'm here just showing you a very high level overview. Um, but the nice thing is that you have a, a, a a viewer uh, on Wikio that you can actually play with. But the data that you will be able to find from Copernicus are data from the Copernicus services, um, mainly the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service uh, managed by Mercator, uh, the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service and the Copernicus Climate Change uh, Service um, managed by ECMWF, and the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service um, managed by the European Environment Agency and by DGGRC from the European Commission. Uh, in terms of the satellite images that are available, um, we have we mirror the uh, archives from UMATSAT and from ESA. Uh, from UMATSAT, you can get all of the Sentinel-3 marine data. Uh, and soon, once they, those become available, Sentinel-6 and Sentinel-4 data. Uh, Sentinel-6 has just been launched, uh, so we're hoping to uh, have the first images available very soon. Um, and then from ESA, ESA distributes the Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, uh, Sentinel-3 land data, and the Sentinel-5P data, the Atmospheric Monitoring Service. Um, so in terms of what it is, what is it that you can do as a, as a user who's not familiar yet with the service or who you just want to try it out, um, at all times you can interact with user support. That's a, a, an offering that's uh, for free uh, to any of the users uh, or any of the potential users of the Wikio DS. Um, you can register for free and uh, have a look at the, the viewer. Um, where you can search for any of the data that I've just uh, shown to you. You can download these data because Copernicus uh, data and information are available uh, uh, on a full free and open data access uh, policy. Uh, so even uh, on the DS, those remain free and open to you. Um, and uh, once you have an application, it's also for free to promote your own business, your own service that you're developing. Um, when we're looking more in terms of the, the processing power needed to develop an application, um, the computation power, the, the storage, um, there is a fee connected to that. Uh, and I will go deeper into the pricing plans um, in one of the following slides. Um, so, it, why why register or um, what is it that you can do when you register? Uh, so in any case, even if you just want to have a check check it out, uh, you do not need to register just to to have a look at the viewer and discover the data or to ask for support. And with discovering the data, we mean you can search for data sets um, and and view them in your browser. But once you want to download any of the data, uh, you are asked to register. Um, the download, as I mentioned, is for free. Uh, it's just that we uh, uh, want to have uh, an overview of which users download the data. It is also possible uh, to process these data with Jupyter Notebooks and the API, um, which is uh, also for free. 
And then once uh, you go one step beyond and want to access the virtual machines, the tools that are available, uh, that's when we get into um, uh, the domain of the, the uh, a small fee uh, to, to use uh, all of these uh, tools. Um, so, um, regarding the Jupyter notebooks, uh, so Wikio has a um, has a, a, an account on Jupyter Lab, where they offer um, uh, some Jupyter notebooks that help you get started uh, as as a new user uh, on working with the uh, Wikio API to, to harmonize data access. Um, Within the, the Wikio Jupyter Lab, you can also find some simple workflows uh, that really help you to get started um, and, and, and test things out. Uh, and we will also be using Jupyter Lab as a tool for training. So if you continue on in the coming webinars and trainings with us, um, you will get a, a deeper introduction into Jupyter Lab. Um, and uh, we will show you uh, what it is that you can all uh, do with the service. Um, one step beyond is then, of course, having the virtual machines uh, using the cloud computing power offered by Wikio. Uh, and these virtual machines are really uh, uh, a scaling up of what you can do with the Jupyter notebooks. Um, there are two main ways of uh, once you've registered and once you have access to these virtual machines, two main ways of accessing them. Uh, very briefly, uh, there is a dashboard um, where you can see which virtual machines you have, which are active. And um, uh, if you're also a developer, you, you prefer to work uh, to, to get a remote connection, uh, SSH access uh, um, or secure sh uh, shell is also available. Um, in terms of the pricing, so I've already mentioned, there's quite a lot that you can do uh, for free. Uh, discovering the data sets, downloading any of the Copernicus data and information, uh, testing them, using them in Jupyter Notebooks and uh, accessing the user support. Uh, and then if, when you start using the virtual machines, the, the processing power, the storage data, and any of the tools that are available um, on the virtual machines, the processing tools like uh, Snap, like uh, QGIS, um, that's when uh, the pricing starts at 66 euros per month, depending on whether you pay monthly or annually and how many, um, uh, how much processing power you need. Um, but uh, the, the pricing is really adapted to, to you. It's not a one price fits all. Um, it, uh, it depends on how much data you're going to need, um, how often you're going to need to process things, uh, how much data you're processing at the same time. Are you talking about time series of a few years, a single image at a time? Um, uh, but the pricing is all detailed on the website uh, as well uh, to keep it very transparent towards you as the user. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Um, and we hope that this has given you some insight on the data and tools that you can get through the website. Um, but really the most exciting thing is what you'll do with it. And Haley will give you a, a bit of an overview of uh, what is possible. Haley. Yes. Hi. Hi. Is this better at all? Can you hear me? Okay. Now? So I, oh, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I can hear you guys very clearly. So it's, it's really hard to tell, but okay. Let's try and share the presentation. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Lovely. I'll turn my camera off just in case. Yeah. Okay. 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 So where were we? <laughs> we were talking about all the different data that's available in Copernicus. And um, hopefully you heard before a little bit what I said that um, really within the program, we have data that covers all the different aspects of the Earth system that you can pretty much possibly imagine. Um, there's something really for everybody when it comes to studying our planet or working in different applications um, on our planet across all these different domains. Um, and as well as covering things like the atmosphere, ocean, land and climate, we also within the Copernicus program are looking at uh, these different domains from different perspectives. 
So we have in situ data where people have gone out and made measurements directly of different parameters that represent our Earth system. We have the Sentinel satellites, of course, who have different perspectives. They look at different areas. They look at different parts of the Earth system on different time scales. And then last of all, we have model data as well, which is included a lot in the Copernicus services, which provides a different way of looking at these different parts of our Earth system. And with this variety of data and derived products, you can get lots and lots of different measurements, indicators and all sorts of things that can give information about the way our planet functions. And of course, if, as I'm sure many of you do, <laughs> you work in these sectors, you'll realise that there's not sort of neat little boxes that everything fits in. You know, the atmosphere and the ocean interact, the atmosphere and the climate have influences on each other. The same with the land and the ocean. So really, when we're looking at the Earth system in, from any different perspective, we want to be able to use data together. And both the Copernicus program and the Wekio DS platform offer the opportunity to do this by synergizing data across multiple different data sources and using them together. And we also can use this data at very many different points um, in what I would call here the value chain of Earth observation or Earth system science data in general. Uh, and indeed, on Wekia, we have some examples here. Uh, these are just a few snapshots of some of the projects that are currently going on on the Wekio platform to give you uh, an idea of what this looks like in reality. Uh, we have people who work on parts of the data validation part of the Earth observation value chain where they're checking the quality of the data. And of course, because all the data is available within the Wekio platform, you can do this kind of analysis with it quite readily. Uh, we have people and projects working on product generation. So taking, say, um, core level one, level two information that's coming from a satellite and using it to distill down into a new product that might be giving you an indicator, for example, of um, a derived geophysical parameter measuring ocean currents or land cover, uh, for example. This can also be done in Wekia with access to all of this data. Uh, and finally, we have people who are taking some of that information and distilling it down even further into decision making services and actually then redistributing the information that they have uh, gleaned from the uh, data that's available in the Copernicus program. And you can see a couple of examples there. Um, there's one group that are working on optimizing shipping routes. Uh, there's another team that are looking at developing assessment tools for predicting risks of drowning on different beaches. And uh, there's another project that's going on providing data for all different sorts of coastal management opportunities. Um, lots and lots of different applications. Really, the world is your oyster when it comes to this data. If you have an idea, there is probably something that the data and this service can do to support you. And to facilitate this, as has already been mentioned a couple of times, you know, we are providing lots of training um, in Wiku. And within that, we have examples specifically of how the data can be used across the thematics. So if you attend some of the training um, sessions that we have, you'll learn, for example, everything from how to access the data, but also then when you get that data, what does it mean? What, what is within the files that you receive? Um, how do these different instruments tick? What are the uncertainties and assumptions? What are the models um, used for? You can actually learn about the data itself, but then you can also learn how to bring that data together to um, do some sort of analysis. We typically show things, for example, like um, into comparison of different products or time series analysis. And hopefully this can help you to build the sort of scientific and technical knowledge that you might need for your applications. And the team that um, do the training have a really integrated understanding then of the system, the available tools that you can use. So whether it's using Python, whether it's using different libraries within it, uh, different types of software, and how you can potentially then scale this up onto different types of uh, infrastructure that you might need. So thinking about you know, how big is the data that you're gonna need? How often are you gonna need to access the data? Uh, these are all the sorts of um, questions that we can address between our training and user support approaches. Um, and as well as the training and the outreach sort of education activities that we do in Wekia, we have various users of the system who are also hosting their own training, outreach and education programs and platforms. Uh, the data that we provide through Copernicus and through Wekia very naturally lends itself to supporting these kind of events. So we've worked on things like hackathons. We supported recently the ECMWF Summer of Weather Code, for example, and there's various other projects that are going on 
to help get this data out to different users who may be even non-experts. So in a summary, we can help you to scale up any application idea that you have. And this is kind of a, a, a very broad overview of a workflow that you might use where if you have an idea of using data for a certain purpose, you can, for example, go to the viewer, you can see if the data is there, you can get a quick look at it and see if it really does give you the sort of information you need. You can advance that use and test, say, working with a couple of images or a small subset of data in a JupyterLab environment in the trainings or with support from our um, user support team. If you have questions, then you can go to the user support and ask them, how would I scale this up? Why is this data showing me this? How can I expand what I'm doing with it? Are there other products that I could use to bring in to my workflow? And then finally, you can work towards scaling this. So, you know, say you start with just small experiments um, in your application area, you can then think about how can I do this instead of on one image or just for a single day? How can I continue to do this for larger regions or over longer time frames or in a more operational capacity? And this is the sort of um, support and help that we can give you to um, fully uh, explore all these opportunities that Wekio can offer. And that's all from me. Thank you very much. I hope that was able to be heard properly this time. So, uh, Stefan will then give you an introduction to the user support. Um, sorry, so can you hear me? The question, the question of the year, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Ah, you can hear me, good. Okay, well, we apologize for these uh, connectivity issues. Uh, it's unfortunately, uh, <laughs> apparently today, bad luck. Although a few days ago, we were on another type of similar meeting and the whole of Italy had major internet issues um, and uh, it was very, very tough. Anyway, Wikio, we have tried to put together a first class, or we have put together a first class user support and we hope that the users will be satisfied. Basically, how are we organized? We're organized in two levels, a level one support where you have operators that can answer relatively simple questions when you have issues with your lock, with your login, your, you lost your password, your uh, technical issues, etc. But there is a very strong team of level two support, which are really top experts in whatever data set, whatever satellite data, whatever model, whatever IT issue you might encounter. Uh, and this this is another major differentiator, as I said earlier, with other uh, DSs. And so you can contact us by email, definitely. Uh, we try to answer really rapidly, like within one day you get a first answer, and within an absolute maximum of five days uh, you get a um, you get an answer for very complex technical questions, and we obviously prioritize the uh, way we we follow up on the questions. Uh, on the basis of their priority. If it's if it's really an issue that is blocking uh, your process, we will obviously uh, react as quickly as possible. And, and we take pride in, in trying in most cases to answer in, in a few hours. Uh, I also want to say that because we have such a pool of experts at UMEDSAT, at ECMWF, at Mercator, and with a team of user support contractors, you can really ask any question. We'll, we'll find, we'll have the answers, even if they address highly technical, highly scientific questions. And if we don't have the answer within our teams, we'll go out to find the answer with the experts. Because of who the operators are, UMETSAT, ECMWF, Mercator, you can imagine that within the organization, there's already quite a, an amount of knowledge, science, et cetera, et cetera. But these organization as well as the uh, user support operators and these user support operators are the former operators of the uh, copernicus support office so uh, they know the uh, copernicus community in and out they're also the current operators of the rus research user service uh, service um, activity so with a very strong network amongst scientists researchers startups uh, companies etc so if you need to at one point, even be put in touch with somebody with whom you can interact interact di directly outside of the uh, pure user support ticketing 
uh, system, don't hesitate. We will always go an extra mile to make sure to, that you're put in a position to play with the data, to process the data, and to use that data for operational processes, just not for playing around with it, but for really de delivering a, use, a, a service to a client or putting together an application for your PhD or for your any activities that you would have to carry uh, both on a business side and on a scientific side. We also have quite a lot, uh, and we're in the process of adding uh, much uh, content to our uh, dedicated documentation, frequently asked questions. We have a YouTube channel which uh, already includes videos from past training sessions and in fact these webinars um, of which this one is the first um, complement a series of training activities uh, a bit that are a bit longer and then go into more details uh, all of that material is um, included on uh, the uh, youtube channel and this and this webin and this webinar will also be uh, included, although I guess we'll have to do some uh, video editing to uh, circumvent the uh, issues we've been having with uh, connectivity. And last but not least, we have a so social media uh, account. And don't hesitate, you can even simple questions or initial contacts. Don't hesitate to also uh, use uh, Twitter, on which we are regularly monitoring uh, the activity. Um, so it's free. It's completely free. You don't need to be a paying user to request support. That's a, that's a beauty of the system. And, and again, I don't think there's any other organization that puts together such a wealth of knowledge and expertise uh, in, in both the technical aspects, the scientific aspects, the IT aspects, because again, uh, WKO has really endeavored to uh, select la crème de la crème, the best of the best uh, in terms of uh, user support. So it really addresses all kinds of questions from the very simple ones to really very, very difficult uh, problems and inclusion of new data sets, uh, updates, et cetera. How does it work? So as I said, two, two, two levels. Uh, and again, with really the desire to uh, uh, be as quick, as quick as possible. And we have quite a, a good track record uh, already. And uh, we will point you to the public support materials, such as the FAQs, the, the manuals, the guides, uh, the uh, video resources, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we have, again, this um, very large pool of experts that are on call and available to answer uh, any, any questions you might, you might have. Uh, so we have uh, guides. Uh, on, uh, for instance, registration and subscriptions on virtual machines, but we're going to be adding over time guides to cover more, let's say, da data-oriented issues, um, model-oriented issues than just the mere um, IT side of the house. Uh, the FAQs are also in the, in the in the process of being developed, and we'll make sure that we give a good panorama of all the questions that we have heard in the past, and that we believe users might have. Right now we have some about basic functionalities and some about troubleshooting. Social media, as I said, uh, we are regularly monitoring and trying to be as uh, proactive as present and as fast uh, as possible. Uh, we have these uh, webinars and training sessions. This is the first of a series of 12. Again, you'll see later on, uh, and Catherine will show you the, uh, the full calendar but a really a, a passionate, dedicated, well, obviously we only work on uh, European, Central European uh, working hours and um, outside of public holidays. So we apologize to our users in other time zones if there, there might be a small shift uh, because of the time difference. But again, we, we really try to be uh, as reactive as can be. Um, there is a, both a form on the website but also a direct email address, which you might want to use from your email client directly. Uh, until now, we have sold three, uh, 336 tickets with a user satisfaction of 100%. So when I say that, we, we do try to get go the extra mile uh, and, and provide a customized um, and to the point service. It's not publicity, it's, it's backed up 
by actual um, key uh, key performance indicators and and measurable measurable parameters. And this is this is what we have achieved from June when we started uh, the operational user support service until uh, very few days ago. So that's basically what I can tell you on the specificities of the WKO user support service. And obviously, both at the end of this webinar and um, in um, the future through the website, through the, um, through the um, email, uh, we are fully available to support you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, very well. Uh, heard so uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation um, before we move on to the Q&A because you've been putting quite a lot of questions in the chat we'll have one more um, very brief overview um, so that you know what the next steps are um, so in total we'll have 12 webinars this is the first of a series of 12 uh, where we'll uh, discuss and show you how to use the copernicus sentinel data and the the, the information from the copernicus services uh, on the wikio infrastructure uh, the webinars will be both aimed at beginners and at experts uh, and will run over the next six months so until the end of june 2021 um, so we'll start with some more generic basic webinars uh, just to show you um, exactly what the DS can do. Uh, and then we'll have uh, thematic webinars for beginners and thematic webinars for experts, uh, where we'll dive deeper into uh, how do you use Wikio DS for a specific uh, domain. And then finally, at the very end, if you're interested in developing your own uh, commercial application, we'll have a webinar on business applications within uh, the Wikio uh, platform. Uh, and here is our schedule. So today we spoke about the Wikio services. Um, we'll have uh, one more webinar before Christmas um, on getting started with the Wikio uh, uh, services. Um, and uh, after New Year's on the satellite data services and opportunities. Um, then, uh, as mentioned, we'll have uh, four thematic webinars, each for beginners and for experts, which will focus more on ocean color, crop mapping, um, air pollution, climate applications, uh, marine applications. Uh, so there's a little bit for everyone. Uh, of course, if you are a beginner now, we hope that through those webinars, uh, because they're sequential, uh, you will also be able to pick up the expert webinars. And then finally, we'll conclude at the end of June, on 24th of June, with a webinar on, on business applications. Uh, you will receive an invitation for the next event after um, this webinar is over. Um, and we uh, hope that we will all see you there. Um, so thank you very much for your attention for all of the presentations. And let's, uh, let's get some questions uh, answered. So, uh, first question, um, is Wikio only for Copernicus services uh, or can developers use uh, other sensors like Landsat as well? I'll take, I'll take this one. Uh, the data that is stored within the cloud of Wikio only is, is only Copernicus data. Nevertheless, you always have the opportunity to upload to your cloud environment Notebook, etc. Data that you have downloaded from your own, uh, from your own uh, research or from other sensors, etc. So it's not included in the offer, uh, but you can you can upload it. That's the answer in a nutshell. Um, thank yeah. you. Uh, second question: Will there be a training session for land data? Um, oh, for You've answered that. You've answered that question. There is more than there's more than one. There are some from uh, for beginners or for non-experts, and there are also some for for experts. Um, is a more detailed description of the Wikio uh, platform and its architecture available somewhere? It's it's available on the uh, obviously on the website. And if the information provided there is insufficient, or if you can't find what you're looking for, do not hesitate to send an email to support at wko.eu, and we will provide you with the required uh, documentation. 
Okay, uh, what are the available tools on Wikio? Uh, perhaps I can quickly answer that. So uh, when you set up a virtual machine, you can select the tools that you need to use yourself. And so you'd also uh, be able to have the, the ability to um, install any tools that you uh, may need. Um, in reference to the price list, um, is the trial period free? And what is the minimum duration that uh, uh, a user can pay for? OK. Uh, trial period free. Trial period means it's indeed free. You don't have to pay. You don't have to enter a credit card number. You can fully use the, uh, the service, the platform, uh, free of charge. And one of the other um, differentiators of Wikio is we offer I think the, the first plan, you have a first pay for plan, you have a five month trial period. So you really have time. And I take advantage of this to answer another question, which is how do you know which is the right plan for yourself? Well, we ha you have on the website a, quite an extensive dis description of what is included and not included in the various plans, but also by using this free of charge trial period, uh, you know, and again, the, the, minimum, the minimum duration is a month. But as you, as you may have not had time to see on Anne Catherine's slides, uh, it's obviously much more, there's a ratio of about one to two between the price when you decide to pay monthly and you maybe want to pay only one a month or when you take the full one year. But it's, we have tried to embed enough flexibility into the design of our pricing plans so that you, and again, this is not, as I said, a commercial operations. So never hesitate to uh, ask uh, what, uh, what we can do to accommodate your particular requirements. Um, and how do we know that we're getting the right plan? By, by as I said earlier, by trying it out and, and using the, the trial period. I think the shortest one is a month. So that should be plenty enough to uh, allow you to uh, figure out whether the plan is that, that a particular plan is the one that you would require for your own application. But also don't hesitate to ask uh, user support uh, and say what it is that you're planning on doing so uh, that we can help you uh, select the right plan. That's that question about computation, uh, scaling up computations, etc. It would be better either you send it by email to the to support or if you're available to attend the next webinar, which will be focused on computational resources, storage, et cetera, et cetera, we would then uh, be in a, uh, in a better position to answer. Um, I believe we're going to have to set up a call with you, Thomas, uh, and uh, um, uh, discuss, uh, discuss your questions, because indeed we have uh, um, not that much uh, time anymore and uh, these are these are some bigger questions there might there might be time in uh, in the next sessions because they are both focused on the IT infrastructure um, and uh, and the use cases so uh, you might you, you you will you you could be able to get otherwise we we would be glad to either answer them in writing through uh, the email or even to set up a call and discuss it uh, face to face Okay, uh, we it's uh, four fifteen, um, so we'll end this webinar uh, at this time. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending, uh, for participating, for all of the questions, and we hope to see you in the next uh, webinar and webinars, uh, the first one on the seventeenth of December. Have a thank nice so evening or morning, depending on or where morning. you are. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for attending, and and again, uh, we are. The Copernicus program itself has in its DNA to be user-centered, and, and WIKEO has that in its own DNA. We've inherited that from the program, so never hesitate to uh, reach out to us. Again, we'll do our utmost best to make sure that we provide you with the uh, requested and hopefully useful information. Thank you again.